gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat I know I ain't perfect Hey YouTube family, it's a family affair It's a family affair Yes, I'm taping for you guys the day before Thanksgiving. I don't plan on being on the tube. None. <laughs> Tomorrow. So I'm going to work this thing out until I feel so tired. I'll just, just throw myself in the bed. But I want to welcome you all to my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your continued support. Continue to like and share and subscribe to my video channel. It really does make me smile. Okay. And hopefully I can give y'all a little kiki -key and a little wisdom as you partake of my videos, okay? But let's go into another must-see video. You remember I told you I was on the rampage because they got on my nerves. Only three of them are the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, you know I already done Nene. I done um, Kenya. And now I'm going to work my way down to Porsche. Okay? They got on my nerves so bad. My soul was hurting. <laughs> I was like, y'all wasted one hour of my time so when i did my video compilation to you know telling you about what happened in my own perspective of what i saw in the real housewives of atlanta last sunday child it was already long and i couldn't make it no long because i know y'all ain't gonna sit no whole hour for me to go rampaging about or on the rampage about three other ones that upset me. They are now benched in my eyes on my channel at this time okay they don't have their uh lips taped down like Cynthia and Eva but they are riding the bench and some titles self-appointed titles had to be taken away okay it just you get down wrong you got to sit out for a while okay until you reprieve yourself or till I see you're back where I know your status is supposed to be okay but we're gonna get into Miss Portia Williams and all of these feelings she's feeling that this man done took her through. And I ain't even going to uh, put it on bad raising. Now, I'm pretty sure Diane told her the game, how the game is being played. And if you're going to be the player of the game, trying to finesse men out here, you better beware of the downfall. Now, I know she told her that. You play with fire, you might get burnt, baby. But if you think you can hold and toe the line with playing, then go ahead and finesse as many men as you want. But when you come across that billionaire, that zillionaire, or whatever, no, it's a 50 50 deal. It can go for you, it can go against you. So, Portia played her cards. She didn't go mess with old anybody that didn't have no type of financial backing behind them. She went around um, Dennis McKinley. Okay. Now, can we blame all of this on Dennis McKinley? No, we cannot because we got two able, uh, well-bodied, and uh, competent people, which is Portia and Dennis. They knew exactly what they were doing, when they were doing it, how they were doing it, and how unprotected um, they were doing it. Okay. You ain't going to tell me, Portia, that you did not know this man had a thing for a lot of women, a lot of times, and some other things we're not going to talk about because it's just not biblical. <laughs> Allegedly messing with animals. I don't even want to go there because if you get down with those kind of people, girl, it says a lot about your credibility as well as your character. So we're not going to touch on that because that really wasn't given as evidence. We didn't see an animal in him taking part in playing around with one another. He playing with the animal, I should say. So we're going to strictly uh, go with what we've seen, what we've heard, and what each party has confessed to doing. Okay. Now, men cheat, women cheat. I don't care how you mix your relationships up, whether it's the same sex relationship or it's a heterosexual relationship. Okay. People cheat for whatever reasons. Okay. That's a given. We all know it. We all either cheated on somebody or we had somebody do it to us. Hey, just is what it is. But Portia, I need you to understand that no sympathy or empathy will be given to people that know up front what they're getting themselves into. You knew this guy was a player player. You knew he had been with so many people out in the street. But in your absent-mindedness, uh, and I'm going to say, you knew it, but you want to play against that fire. No, it, you just want to tempt the fate and you got burnt. You know, this man wasn't ready for marriage life. He wanted to party. He wanted to be 
with women or he wanted to be with you. But then if he couldn't be with you, he know he was going to get with somebody else. So he had a lot of toy playing. He didn't put up his toys yet. And you were trying to convince him that you had the full package. Okay. You had a very good job. You had your own wealth. Uh, you had your own materialistic things. You, you know, you keep yourself looking fantabulous, fanta ah, fantastic, fabulous on an ongoing uh, basis. And you really don't want a man, even though you desire a man, you don't have to have a man. That's what your game you played out there, okay? And he got it hook, line, and single. But guess what? It don't matter. He could have been with some people in society that may deem ugly, fat, uh, no cooth about themselves, no education background, you know, no co good career choices um, under their belts or anything. They still get cheated on, you know what I'm saying? Same goes to say you got all, uh, uh, say a nine-figure salary, body banging, great personality, uh, education out the bazooka, money in the bank, still get cheated on. However, you're going to sit there and play the victim on all of this when you knew all of this going in. So, see, that's why I can't give you no sympathy. Can't give you no empathy on that either, Okay. You're going to do things opposite than what tradition is made to look like or how you're supposed to do it from the get-go. You wanted this man. You had unprotected sex with him. I don't know how many times. You knew there was a, a chance or a capability of someone conceiving, which is you. But you, uh, you continue to have unprotected sex with this man. Did you think about the STDs? Did you think about something you couldn't get rid of? Like uh, syphilis, uh, herpes, HIV, AIDS, and the list could go on and on and on and on and on. Okay? And hell, I heard it's some strain of gonorrhea you can't get rid of. You just haven't had to keep taking antibiotics and stuff of that nature. So, yeah, you threw caution to the wind on all of that. You put your health at risk. You put your baby's health at risk because you could have contracted something that would have stayed with you, even though uh, your baby could have got it if you may have had a vaginal delivery, but I'm pretty sure they would have did a C-section so it didn't even have to travel through those walls. But, I mean, you took your life and your baby's life for granted while you were this man playing the unruly uh, thing of unprotected sex. You didn't think about all of that, or you didn't care to think about that at the time when you was enjoying yourself, impregnating yourself willingly, willing participants. Because uh, at the time, let's think about it. If the sex is good, ain't nobody thinking about it. You just know you want it raw. You don't want to have that, um, what do you call it, uh, protection going on with the on. Uh, easiness and how it makes both parties feel down now they want the real raw action and feeling so both of y'all knew this but me and sometimes I, I ain't gonna stereotype or generalize but most men don't want to have that covering they want to feel the raw the icky the sticky the juicy the, you know all of that it gives that's why you know it wasn't like that when we had adam and eve we had no protection it was like go and pre Procreate the world, you know what I'm saying? Get your feelings in. Nothing with childbirth, no pain bearing. All the way you bit that apple, and it's been a hard road to toast since then for the women. But we ain't even gonna get into that. We're gonna stay where we're focused at, which is why Portia wanna play the blame game when she was so much into it as well. Okay. But getting back to Portia on a really deeper scale, how can we as women help and uplift other women when women don't take the time to really think this situation out. Okay? That's a fair as, as, what do you call it? Uh, assessment of the situation, I can say. I really feel that it's a true thing. Then you go and messing with the man and you're single. You're, you're putting yourself out to be a baby mama. But what if he said, okay, oh, yeah, I think I want to marry you. Let me ride. Let me test it out and see. Uh, a couple of times, you know, I'm just like, he used you in an issue as a car. Or maybe you did the same thing to him. I don't know if I want to be married. I want to make sure he's packing, got it going on, and I'm going to be satisfied. Okay? That satisfaction ain't going to last for how, how long? For how many minutes? Okay? 
Maybe you can keep going back for seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifth, but it only lasts for how many seconds the real orgasms that be going in once you get that feeling going, it don't last that long. Okay, let's let, let's be truthful. And as you get older, how <laughs> all that you gonna pretty much want is just conversation. You can be like, you wanna go down there and bam on me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling pretty nice down now. Maybe we can do it once a month, but I know, I, you know, wait. I just want conversation right now. I don't want that physical. I'm just saying as you get older, you get settled, you get in your ways, all that you want to do is cuddle with somebody, make some memories. <laughs> and I'm just saying it from my perspective. I may change, but, you know, I, I don't know. I'll let you know if anything changes in that situation. But right now at 51, going strong, I like good conversation. I like uh, to be held. I like to be thought of as a queen and, and us getting things together and we just enjoying life. I mean, I know that's the aspect of it. I'm not running for, from it. I encourage it, but I'm just saying all this, you know, I got to have you 24 seven. that. Now nah, my body not put up like that. It, you know, even if it was a little thinner or whatever, I want nobody banning me in and out down now. I kind of like it being fresh. I kind of like it being, you know, normal pH. I, I love all that right now. <laughs> but that is not about me. This is about Portia. Okay, let's go and get back to her. But anyway, the way she went through this whole episode, going to counseling, going to uh, let Dennis confess on air after he done lied to her, I don't, for, I don't know, for how many weeks or months. She going to have all this salacious story to secure her bag for this season and to make people want to come back. But Portia, all that you really gave us is that you were really one dumb cookie. Okay. First of all, if you're going to be a queen, you're going to be a princess. Know the odds and try to stay above that person uh, thinking of you. Secure the bag either way. Being a baby mama or being a wife. I chose for you since you had this whole thing set up that you wanted a family. Baby, why you just then romance him however you want to romance him, protect yourself, get married, sign that prenup agreement because y'all both have it seems like a lot to lose financially and y'all don't want to put yourself in a situation in case it's just sex lust and adventure that y'all really was founding your relationship on instead of love connection making a family and we ain't got time to be cheating on him okay but since y'all were more so the first part of my speech of lust you are getting your own gratification from each other and then the finances came. Yeah, you should have been saying, okay, if you like me like I like you, we both done test drove each other. Let's make this thing happen, okay? Did you really have to say, oh, I want a wedding. I didn't, you don't had a wedding before, baby. Ain't no sense of keeping repeating the same uh, scenes where you're being showed and put on display for a couple of hours and then all of that. You got a big ass bill to pay for it when it's really more so for your company that's coming to see you than more so for yourself. You're just being put on on display like on a wedding cake and you're the centerpiece, okay? But the money's coming from you in Dennis's pocket, I'm guessing. But since it seems like they say you're going to get a spin off to showcase your wedding and just then the third, okay, whatever. <laughs> Do you, if that's going to be all free, because I guess you can't partake in it. But if you were looking at it from a grown point of view, uh, OG, or just a young G point of view, you ain't got no time to be wasting money. You don't waste your time and your money when you were younger, uh, you know, in your 20s and your 30s. Well, I guess it's Portia Ford and she's still in her 30s. What I'm saying, once you hit 26, 28, it ain't time for no more financial mistakes, okay? It's time to really think things through. Make sure you're, you're saving. For those rainy days, how our parents used to say, or whoever raised us, they had great sense, great wisdom. Save for that rainy day because it's going to be plenty, okay? It's going to be some unforeseen health issues. It's going to be some unforeseen, if you're in a home, repair, renovation issues. Um, just a lot of things that can come up. Car issues where you got to get tires or transmissions or, or whatever. You know, life itself is just a puzzle and it can be very stressful when you ain't got that moolah to get you out of it. OK, and we ain't got time to be asking folks, friends, banks and all this other stuff to give us some money. OK, we'll pay you back. We'll make uh, layaway payments. <laughs> but anyway, my whole thing with Portia, why are you losing your mind 
on a man that is not even your husband. I cannot believe it. If you are going to therapy for your boyfriend, <coughs> your fiance, how you want to call it, because I'm still looking at him as your boyfriend. Now, the brother took the rain back from you when you had told him you can't do this no more. The door is bolted. I don't like you anymore as a human being. Goodbye, dismiss, and, and move on. Have a nice life. This brother took his rain back from you, Portia. How in the hell did you let him do that? Did he try to take it off your finger, girl? Because I would have been at the new pawn shop or trading it in at a reputable jewelry company and seeing what kind of bracelet, necklace, uh, toe ring, whatever I can make out of that, baby. Or better yet, uh, um, sell it back to him and put it in a, um, a, what do you call that, account for children, a savings account. Okay, invest in the baby, like, okay? because that's what y'all both made. And if I'm not gonna get anything out of it, then damn sure our baby gonna get some out of it. That's how you should have looked at that situation. And then if you wanted you back, if you wanted to take a back, it, we would be serving all over with another whole ring, because that ring came with issues. Okay, return. Nope, don't return the sender. Go and take the thing and get some revenue. Yes, that's what I would have been all day, every day. And I've been looking at him like, what? We well, huh? You caused the situation. I ain't no judge in the state of Georgia gonna say, uh, Indian Gilbert. <laughs> she must get that ring back to you because she wasn't unfaithful. You were unfaithful. And that's how we would have played that. See, Portia, you ain't grown up yet, baby. You ain't grown up. You don't get nothing back, especially if you don't put time in. And this man was wrong. He was in the wrong. Mm -mm, baby. We've been going to court on just that alone, just that ring situation. And we, we would have been presenting evidence that, yeah, you cheated. You caused the the riff, or maybe to me, I would have said it up front when he put that nice rock on my hand. You know you're not getting this back if you mess up. And if I messed up, I sign anything saying I need to give it back to you so you can go and trade it in or get your money back or sell it. I, I don't know. If I messed up, that's cool. I sign a promissory note uh, signing it back over to you. You have it. If you do something, uh -uh, it's coming with me, baby. And it would dry my tears as I'm cashing in on something else with this ring, okay? And if it was a problem then and there, then that was the one sign to say you don't need this man, okay? You don't need this man. But you chose a man that had philandering ways, had lying ways, and would cheat on anything if he could get away with it, okay? And then he put you on a therapist's couch where you sitting in... Your room telling a complete stranger the ends and comings and goings of your relationship with this man. And he not even your husband, Portia. That's strike number two, baby. That's strike number two. Ain't nobody going to my, upset my peace and understand it, that the Lord gave me this joy I have, that the word didn't give to me. Okay. Ain't no man, woman, zo man in this world going to do that to me, especially if I don't have no ties. Only ties you had to that man is you became his baby mama. That's it. Not his wife. Now, I see if y'all were married. Y'all have been married for a couple of years or several years, and you had to go sit on the couch with somebody that's a mediator that don't know either one of y'all that's going to be completely unbiased, and y'all can work things out. But that's when you're a husband and wife, and you got you know family to think about because your child is involved. But I get on, I get mad at these women too. Say I'm just staying, or they just mean say I'm just staying for my baby, my child. How do your child and your baby as they grow up? They don't want to see y'all fight. They don't want to see no unlove in that room or in that house between you two. No, you are being selfish. Do it for yourselves, and your kids will adapt. When they see you adapting and you're getting along, uh, co-parenting, whatever, they gonna they gonna be okay. It may not be a union where everybody's in the same house, but it's gonna be love all the way around. Okay. All right. Secondly, Portia, why are you planning a wedding and you don't have a prenup? What's up with that prenup? Have you ever got that prenup together? Because you didn't get it together prior to him cheating on you. You didn't get it together after he done cheated on you. What a prenup, at, baby? Where is the prenup? Because we ain't going to test the love theory because he already cheated on you. And unless he confess in his heart that he don't want to do that no more, he don't want to live that kind of life no more with you and put you through that. The boy is going to change, and, and not change, I'm sorry. The boy man, he's going to do the same to you again. It's just going to be a different date, a different year, and a different month, okay? He's going to do it again, Portia. If he hadn't come to the 
agreeance in his mind that you're the only woman for him and will ever be the only woman for him in this lifetime, he's going to cheat again, Portia. You can bet that. You can take it to the bank and it it will be cashable, okay? It won't have insufficient funds. That's a guarantee. Okay, Portia. You're saying that he threw you and the family that y'all wanted to create by making that bundle of joy away. Well, did you do the same thing in a sense, Portia, when you got with this man and you did not become his wife before you made that bundle of joy? Weren't you doing throwing caution to the wind? Weren't you pretty much saying, oh, I'm going to throw it up. It's a, uh, It could be a match of 50-50 or, you know, it just is what it is. You did not sit and ascertain and look through everything with a big magnifying glass. Okay, you didn't do that, Portia. So we're not going to blame Dennis all in this. You share some of the burden. Okay, yes, he was the main contributing factor. However, you didn't have to be a part of it, and you definitely didn't have to be riding it raw, getting it served up to you raw, and then you want to regurgitate after it goes wrong. No, 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 no. We're not going to let you. We're not going to uh, let you off the hook, Portia. No, you just as wrong as Dennis, okay? You just want us to play the sympathy, empathy part for you because you're a woman. You're a woman with a child, and we're supposed to have some immense uh, longing to support you. No, we want you to get up here like these other women that have lost their husbands or boyfriends through cheating or through death. Or maybe they uh, care to be loving on a same-sex type partnership. However, it doesn't spawn for them. Women and men get up every day, face that adversity, put it to the side, deal with it somehow, spiritually, or may you know, yoga or whatever, but they move on with their day, and they have supportive people in their lives to help them take up some of the, the uh, space that's being lax from having a one-unit family, okay? I definitely can talk and speak on it, all right? My marriage didn't work after four or five years, tops, been uh, knowing the guy my whole life, but you don't know anybody until you actually live with them as husband and wife or same partnership or however it is how you get down. When you live with that person, Every day on the day, 365 days a year, 24 7, except for going to work or whatnot, that separates you all uh, from being around each other. Family vacations, just everything you all. If y'all didn't have a solid love connection where it was just the warmth and the feelings that you feel, not nothing being physical or lustful type, just, you know, getting it in every time you can. No, I'm talking about a connection where. You're missing that person if they're not there with you. You're thinking about it. You call them. That type of connection is what I'm talking about. If you and Dennis didn't have that, y'all still do. Still do. Because it ain't all about being sexual. Because something can make him be impotent. You know, maybe a car accident. Maybe some health issues or whatever. What you going to do then, Portia? Or maybe something you can't get down like you used to. What you going to do? Have an open marriage? Just as uh, say, you know, he needs this in his life. You're not going to... Uh, not let him have this because it's your issue. No, nope. when you become married, honey, you become one body, one flesh, one mind. Okay. But anyway, I'm too deep for you with that because how you portraying your life right now. Uh, uh-uh. <laughs> I think you need to sit and read your Bible. Okay, and check yourself on some of those uh demeanors, those ways you have been harvesting out here lately. And then you're going to see you coming up for the negative that you need to set the tone, get it together, and move accordingly. Okay, Portia? And then you're going around here playing like you're a wife when you're not a wife. You're a baby mama, Portia. You haven't solidified anything because if you really truly love this man, he truly loves you. Go on to the courthouse and get married. Let them film that. Okay? And then you're going to take a luxurious one-month cruise or vacation where you fly somewhere to some exotic island or however go to the Alps or whatnot and let them film that okay but if you really wanted to be Mrs. Dennis McKinley that prenup will already be signed and dried as we're speaking doing this commentary and as y'all were taping season 12 that would have been footage of that I signed you signed now let's get married okay and then hey you got Decatur, you got Atlanta, you got Brunette, every place you could possibly think of of a courthouse where a uh, judge can marry y'all. 
We don't have to stop. We don't have to wait. You can still get your spin off, but just tell them, I, I want to get married now. And I want to do it on TV. Let's go on out to the courthouse and film this shit. A lot, a lot of people would love that, Portia. A lot of people would love that and embrace it more than seeing you being on somebody's therapist's couch hollering about a man that's not even your husband. Okay? You're a baby mama. He a baby daddy. All right? <sighs> And I'm just like, I don't understand why your boyfriend got you in therapy. That's another, that's, see, you don't struck out right there. Ain't no way in the world my boyfriend going to have me in therapy. My husband may have me in therapy if I choose to go and salvage something. But my boyfriend ain't going to have me in no therapy, okay? That's a bad sign all the way around, Portia. And we had this horrible scene where, and it just made me mad, Portia, because, you know, women and men are doing it every day. All right, maybe you need a backup car. I don't know where your car was, your Jeep or whatever, to where you found yourself having to uh, rent or have an Uber come pick you up to go to work. That was just a fake fraudulent scene, and I don't ever want to see that scene again. Oh, I don't want to see that because you got a, a car portion. I mean, women are doing it every day. They got to strap them little bundles of joys and they little car seat. They got to get on the expressway or the highways and byways, get them to their caregiver or whatnot. And they got to get out there and go bust their ass and work on a nine to five if they not working 24 seven by them being an entrepreneur. OK, so that whole little scene, you could have left that out. You could have left because I was just pissed off. And then I'm trying to figure out if your mom is living with you, taking care of your household at this time. Why is she not watching, baby girl? Why is she not into her second grandchild? Okay, Porsche, you could pay her whoo, out the wazooka, okay? And then you know you don't have to think about PJ at all. Her mama got her, and you can worry about your financial situations and how you can continue to make money for your empire for you and your daughter, okay? Because it ain't for you and Dennis. Y'all ain't signed no prenup agreement, and y'all ain't husband and wife. So me and my book, we'll be trying to see how much money we can make for me and PJ, so we could continue to live the lifestyle that we are accustomed to. Okay, girl, that's your way your mentality should be. But like I said, I ain't gonna put it on Mama Diane because she probably don't want to watch her grandchild. <laughs> she got two grandchildren, and I think both of my girls. She like, I, I need my my time. I need my space. But how I look at it, if you over there, Miss Diane, please take care of that child at least five. Four or five hours a day, okay, until Portia get back home. Because she ain't taping on the Real Housewives of Atlanta on a daily basis. And I think with her going to work that early in the after, in the morning, she'd be back home by 2 or 3. Give Portia back her child. But that's just how it is. We don't get a break. Mamas don't get a break. Good daddies don't get a break. They go out there, do what they got to do to provide for their family. They come back. That's their second job, okay? They have to ride it like it's a horse until the wheels fall off if you're driving, you know, on Mustang. <laughs> okay. So we, nobody gets a day off unless they're sick. And then you still have to be like, what can I do for my bed? Okay. What can I do uh, a little bit to help my family out? You see what I'm saying? That's the mother's love. That's a mother. Not a mama, but a mother that it speaks of in the Bible. We're going to make things happen, okay? Oh. Until we leave this uh, beautiful world that the Lord created for us, yes. Even though our leaders in society are making it hell on earth for us. Hell on earth, okay? But we're going to let that one go. All right, and then, with Portia, why are you taking your baby to work? The child is not 13, 14, 15 years old where we bring our children to work and let them see what our work environment details and see if it's something that they may want to consider as a career choice. Okay, girl, girl, why are we taking a baby up there? Unless it was pre-planned, it was something that wanted to uh, elevate ratings for that particular day or that particular week or, or whatnot. I, I don't know. Because I would talk to them, now, hell no, nah, I ain't bringing this baby up there. No, I'm not. Unless y'all got a room where it's already set up for, you know, like, a playpen, crib, or one of them all-in-one type of situations. And y'all got the milks on and the bottles already. I mean, it has to be a setup that I have, like I have at home. That's the only way we would have had baby girl up there. And then... It would have been somebody with me. Mama would have been coming with me. So when we finished taping, it would have been like, okay, cool. But no, Portia, don't do that. Oh, not, not precious. Portia, don't do that no more. Not a good little baby. Not a good look. Keep them kids at home away from your job, all right? 
We don't want no infractions. We don't want no workman's comp thing going on. We want none of that. We want them safe at home, especially at that age. Uh-uh. You could Skype your baby if you need to because you, you, you're not that uh, busy where you can't just, like, step off of air or because y'all not really talking and t- y'all just talking trending news and just that and third. that's really not a job that's really fun <laughs> that's like a fun uh place to go to work okay so you need to be doing your job making that revenue keep baby girl at home okay that's all i'm saying you can still do what you want to do with your child your life but i'm just giving you some edification baby girl don't need to come to work with you unless she walking talking can do for herself okay like uh, you need to go in another room while i'm working or you can just see but don't be heard okay type of situation where you got a little baby that they they temperament you don't know when they're gonna come out the woodwork with that loud screaming hollering going on then you're like oh lord you know what i'm saying and it seems from your footage on your confessionals you'd be tired you were so tired of the little nannies you don't hire or the caregivers i don't know what you're calling them because they still they're trying to have a conversation with you who is doing your interviewing <laughs> Because they, they don't got stuff wrong. They're not your assistant. They didn't care with baby. I mean, you go deal with the baby. I come and check on you and see how you and my baby doing. Don't come check on me asking me different questions out. You know, my naked hairline, go naked hairline, or how to get in uh, uh, the entertainment business or whatever uh, information they're trying to derive from you. I don't know the point, okay? But I'm just saying, it's all about how you set things out. And how things would come back to you. So it, you set the tone, Portia, baby girl. You set the tone. Uh, and I just want you to get out this frame of mind that you're the only one that went through a bad relationship. Okay? Because for one, like I said, you knew who the man was. I'm sure you scouted him out. I'm sure you got the financial portfolio on him and all that good stuff. And you started to uh, make a way where y'all became... Uh, associates, maybe friends to lovers, and now here we are. Here's this is where we are a hot mess, okay? Situation. So, stop acting like you're the only one that's been through a bad relationship, and you're the only one that messed with a man, got pregnant, and still have no real validity to a last name. Or being the wife of this man. Stop acting like you're the only one that had a baby and shit went left. Okay, with the relationship. Stop acting like you done lost your mind. Okay, baby girl. Get in your essence of who you are. Get back to making your money. Making your self-esteem rise higher than it's ever been. And stop depending on a man's way. Of getting to your next level. Okay. Get a ring on your finger. That's going to stay. Meaning you take it off and give it back. Not that you take it off. And uh, he's requiring it back. All right baby girl. No. Mm -mm. That's an Indian gift all day every day. Get to the space in your life. Where you're going to make it. You're going to be good. And you're thinking positive thoughts all the time. Regardless of what your outside environment is bringing into you. Or you're letting bring into your internal environment, girl. Because your baby girl is going to be looking at this. They love mimicking their parents. And when you're out of order. Or you're showing unladylike behavior and demeanor. What do you think your daughter going to pick up? Because they think mama is gold. They think daddy is gold. They would do no wrong to them. So they must be doing something right because they have this large platform that that they're on. People watch them on a daily basis. We have all this materialistic stuff. So I want to emulate them. No, we want our children to emulate the best part of us, not the horrific side. Okay, because that's just going to come back double, double fold that what you did. That was dirty. It's going to come back. If it don't hit you, it's going to hit your kids or somebody in your family that you really do care about or you consider them family. So watch yourself, Porsche. That's all I'm saying. Right now, you're on the bench because you make all women look bad, especially the ones that have definitely overcome, saw, conquered, and moved on. Some of us are doing it for ourselves with the help of the Lord and other family members. We don't have 
significant others in our lives. Maybe something because we don't want them. Maybe because we haven't gotten the right one that the Lord sent us. But you and Kenya both said the Lord presented y'all with these men. No, baby. Y'all presented these men with y'all selves. <laughs> Okay, because the Lord ain't nowhere near no chaos, no misunderstanding, and no mess. Okay? So, with that said, I feel better. I feel better. I got her straight in my own ways. I, you know, hopefully they're seeing these videos and maybe they can get a clue. All right? Or take it for what it's worth because it's not being malicious. It's not being mean. I'm just trying to keep them elevated. Okay? Don't let nobody, no one steal your joy. Okay? The word ain't give it, the word can't take it away. That was God given, okay? <clears throat> but that's just how I think on my spiritual plane. All right, okay. Well, thank y'all guys for coming by, stopping, listening to my rant on my three housewives that I do really care about. But like I said, when they doing fraudulent, fake mess that I can't stand or stomach, I'm going to get on my platform and give my two cents, my two dollars, my opinion on the situation. For those who love to hear my comments, thank you for supporting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. And I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye. I know I ain't perfect, but don't you tell it how it be. Thank you.